Hello everyone and welcome to our Let's Play series of Torment Tides of Numenera. This is Colonel RPG as usual and I'm very happy that it shows to join me today as we talk here with Anne Tozon. Uh, here in uh, Little Niliath, I believe is uh, the name of this place, or Niliash, I, I always forget. Uh, but anyway, we're talking to this guy and he's got a, a maw in his pants, and he's got a tentacle in his pants, and he's kind of hypnotizing us, and uh, Reen is afraid of him, it's all a matter, it's it's all very crazy, very crazy. You can read it if you missed last episode, but it's it's not going well. And the thing that I'm kind of bothered with right now is that he says like something like, he says this, I told you that my studies changed when I came to the bloom. One of the moss tentacles wind winds around his wrist. And that's what I stopped last episode. Um, he didn't tell us that. He didn't tell us that. Not before. He just says that his studies took him all over the world to lands beyond the stars before I finally came here to the bloom. Hmm. I don't know what he is. This is how he says. Amon claimed me. Now we both feed, quite harmlessly, mind you, on the connections between people. I understand the sensation can be quite pleasant. I think that was what my character was feeling, yeah. The tentacle slips reluctantly from his arm. If you wish to feed us, bring a close friend to visit us. We will be here, waiting. Uh... I've... brought... wait a minute. What? Oh, okay, okay. I've brought you. <laughs> I brought an, an ally to feed you as you ask. Would any of them satisfy you? Okay, so I thought I thought I was missing something, but no, I, I didn't meet this guy before, uh, and I'm not gonna say that line right there. I'm just gonna run away. Farewell. And uh, Reen wants to talk yes. to me. What's up? Well, I want to talk to you. I. I need someone to talk to. I need to talk to you. She clutches your hand, but won't look into your eyes. Uh... Of course. Uh, what is it? Even though she said that she needed to talk, she hesitates. It's about my memories. I, f I feel like I should remember more by now. But I don't. I can't. I can't remember my parents' names. Why can't I? I, I can't remember why I left them, or how I got to Sega's Cliffs, or... or there anything that happened to me before that horrible slaver toll captured me? Uh, how did you get hurt, Rin? Oh, her cheek becomes uh, cheeks become flushed. I was running away from someone. I I don't know who. Toll and her slaves captured me. They hurt me, then stitched me up so Toll could use me. And she shivers, her face twisting into an ugly mask of disgust. I escaped later. Days later, I think, Hotero found me in the junkyard, and then later I m made my home in Sagas Cliffs. And she frowns. But who was I running from before Toll found me? That's what I can't remember, and I don't know why. Oh, could it be the maw? Or could it be the, the, uh, the, the, not the maw, the thing, the, 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 the bloom? Uh, why do you think that is? She shakes her head. I don't know. The memories are there, I know it, just like those thugs knew I was in that house on, Cla on Cliff e Cliff's Edge. I can feel the memories, I hear them. Or rather, uh, rather she says she can't feel the memories. But when I look for them, they aren't there. Do you mean they're hidden? Hidden? Like the thugs? Like... And she yanks Al from her pocket and holds him in front of her face. Al, did... Did you know about this? And she cocks her head the way she does when she listens to him. A worried expression blooms on her face. She suddenly gasps. A tear drips from the corner of her one eye. Are you alright, Rin? No, I'm not. It was all, the whole time. And she clutches the stone. Why? She listens more. You hear something like a bird rustling in its egg. But you can't tell if it's from the stone or not. Her head is still cocked. Rin speaks to you, her voice flat. He's been hiding parts of my memory from the beginning. He wanted me to blend in, to avoid undue attention. And he was worried. He thought if I knew the truth, I would have given up a long time ago. From the beginning. Tell me then, she says to the stone. Her face reddens, angrier than you've ever seen her before. What have you been keeping from me? She listens for what seems a long time. Her expression increasingly frightened as she does. Finally, she lets her hands fall and she tells you. I ran away. She says. 
I was angry at them, my parents. Something stupid, something we'd fought over a hundred times. But this time I left. I packed my things, took my coat, and when the moon was high, I just walked out. I thought I was prepared, thought I was safe. But they attacked me. Amar, no, no, I, I shouldn't say their name. Uh, soldiers, it doesn't matter. Her knuckles whitened around the stone. I ran. They ran faster. I made a god somehow, a god of going forth. I must have cut away into this world and fallen through it. I guess it saved my life, but then... The slavers, my head. All. And she scowls and shouts at the stone. You kept it from me! You walked into my mind and stole from me! I can never forgive you, never! And she pulls back and throws the stone as far away as she can manage. Then she collapses to her knees, her shoulders shuddering with each sob. I think she's projecting. That's not actually a god. But... If that is the case, the throwing of the stone is actually going to be fundamental because it works as a, a placebo effect. The fact that she got rid of it, that she can project, I think I think that works. Uh, but what, I, I don't know. Um, I'm sorry he did that to you, Rin. It wasn't right. Hmm, <laughs> she scowls. Says the man who steals thoughts without trying. She stays, th stays there, on her knees, for a long time, sobbing, then sniffing, sniffling. Finally, she wipes her face on her sleeve. She stands up and walks over to where she threw all. She stares at the rock for a while, then bends down and puts it in her pocket. I need him, she says to no one in particular. She straightens, her face a mask. Are we going or what? Oh, come on, Rin! I'm not gonna be able to... She looks at... As though she's about to say something, then shuts her mouth. This happens three times before she gives up. Do you want to talk to me about something? Yes. No. She covers her mouth with her hand. Never did. Uh, how are you holding up? Okay, so she she's back to, yeah. She, she's, she, yeah. Uh, so... You were acting strangely around Aeon Tozon. Why? I don't know. I... I don't. I, I I would remember if I'd seen him before, wouldn't I? If I'd been in this terrible place? She shakes her head. But maybe we should see what he can do, just in case. Uh, really? Are you sure? No, I don't think so. I, I think this is meant to be a sacrifice. Um, I, I'm gonna follow her lead, though. Okay, so she's shivering. There's something wrong with her right now. Uh, I, I think that I, I need to wait. L let's, let's say this, and I saved before because I am probably gonna reload if these guys get upset. I brought an ally to feed you, as you asked. Would any of them satisfy you? Aeon Tozon closes his eyes and concentrates. A silky heat fills the air. You feel comfortable, lazy, happy. He holds one hand before him, centered on his chest. Then his fingers move to Aligurn. Over to Eretis. A wide smile consumes his face. Declare a name, and I will feed. What about me? I have strong feelings towards him, says Rin. Unfortunately not, says a uh, Aeon Tez Tozon. I mean no offense, but my studies require subjects above a certain age. Aligurn, are you okay with this? Good, he says, or says Aeo a Aeon Aeon toes on, rubbing his hands together with a rasping sound. A pleasant, insidious warmth streams th through you, lacing every vein with pleasure. Tell me, he says, turning to Aligurn. Tell me how you met. Aligurn speaks, but you can't focus on his words. You feel the heat of his regard for you diminishing, but find it momentarily hard to care. Oh, that's not good. Though the thunderous, or, or through the thunderous pulses of, oh boy, of pleasure, you see tentacles spilling from within Aeon Tozon's clothing. A maw opening. Rin peers through the portal and the world be beyond it. She slumps. She slumps to the ground? She... what? Following her gaze, you find Aeon Tozon staring at her in return. A curious expression on his face. Of course, he thinks. Never thought I'd see her again after the way she tore out of here. Yeah, she was here, wasn't she? A pale, transparent figure steps out from whatever world lies on the other side. He turns this and that way. Oh! It's got horns! He turns this and that way, 
uh, perhaps attempting to get his bearings. Seeing Aeon Tozon and his maw directly behind him, he scampers off to the side to create some personal space. And finally, noticing you, he gives you a cheery wave. Aeon Tozon conceals the maw once more and gives you a, a, tremend a tremulous smile. Your companion falls silently with a puzzled expression. Okay, so I think he, I, I think he just lost what a little bit of uh, of his regard for me. He didn't. Huh. I kind of want to talk to him though. Hey, what dude. What do you need? I need I need to talk to you. Uh, so uh, how are, how are you holding up? I'm fine. I appreciate you asking. Okay, that's good. Uh, I want to talk about you and your story again. So all of this is already the same things we said before. Okay, good, good, good. So the, the game does a good job of telling me when I need to talk to my guys. That's good. It's, it's really nice. Uh, so, Quetas of Zemian. What? This pale, ghostly figure wears outlandish clothes and a horned helm. A pack tangled scars from an unfamiliar weapon loop and curl over his transparent body. Oh, he says, tilting his head. You, have you found my brother yet? One of these trips, I'll stop, <laughs> I'll stop being surprised, he thinks. Uh... Was I supposed to be looking for him? Really? He says, groaning. You told me you'd... He trails off and slaps his forehead. The impact makes his helm tilt forward, and he puts up his hand to hold it in place. Of course, right. This is the first time we meet, isn't it? He straightens, holding out his hand formally. Hello, I'm Quetazinium, and uh, I've been traveling through time and looking for my brother for millions of years. Nice to meet you. But he tries this time. Bet he's, he tries this time, he thinks. Want my hand go right through yours? Damn, <laughs> he says, grinning. <laughs> I figured I connected those two, but I didn't actually fully thought, think out the line that he would say that. Uh, but yeah, uh, every time we do this, I hope you'll fall for it, and you almost never do. Oh boy. At any rate, let me know if you see my brother, huh? Uh, so you came out of that mall. Are you connected to the bloom somehow? To the what? He looks around. Oh, no, no, I'm not. I just sort of, well. Let's call it swim between places, F following currents. You know, someone pulled the plug and here I am. Uh, how many times have we spoken? Good question, he says, consulting an invisible mental list just above your head. Thousands, I'd say. Always a pleasure, mind you, though I don't know why we keep running into each other. I don't see anyone else more than once. Oh. Really? Hmm. He squints. If I had to guess, it's your relationship with the tides. But I don't mind. I, it's, it's nice seeing your familiar face. He, he's probably the closest thing to a friend I have. Oh, so he trusts me. Or, you know, maybe not. <laughs> I shouldn't... I should, mm, uh, mm, what, what, what are those scars from? Scars, he says, looking down. Oh, those look painful. I uh, No idea. I have to say, I'm glad I don't remember, though. Are you a ghost? I like to think so, he says, shrugging, but I don't really remember dying, just the traveling and searching. And I think this helmet wouldn't keep moving around if I was, you know, spectral. Uh, on the other hand, I seem to remember promising my brother I'd haunt him when I died, so that's some evidence for the other side. What does your brother look like? Well, sort of like me, minus the helmet. Oh, I know the guy. Of course I know the guy, yeah. Uh, he keeps forgetting, though. We need to go there. Um, and he's from a world long ago, so he might be wearing... Ah, right. I do this every time we meet. It's just that I usually go centuries between running into you, and I always forget that you can't have possibly seen him, you winks, but there's a touch of sorrow in it. Still, let me know if you see him, okay? It's always worth a shot, he says. I won't give up on him. Uh, uh, I think I know where your brother is. What? What's the helmet about, you, uh, about anyway? Oh, so glad you asked, he says, and he looks it. Uh, he, he looks it. He looks glad. Good. I love this story. He centers the helm on his head. So, I ended up on this battlefield once. It was, a, uh, well, it hadn't gone well for the side wearing these helmets. I walked up this blackened hill following the shouting, and I saw, it was probably a city once, and it was on fire and covered in black flames. He shakes his head, the helmet doesn't move with him. <laughs> That's weird. Uh, so there were the just two fighters left. The big man wearing this helm and, uh, her. She was huge and made of screaming shadows and that same black fire. And when the warrior charged at her, roaring, she just touched him. She touched him and he fell over, twitching and burning. He looks up at you. One of these times you told me she was... Yeah, I figured it was going to be the sorrow. One of these times you told me she was called the sorrow. Since this is the first time we've met, I'm guessing you have some questions for me. 
Oh. Did I tell him about the sorrow and now he's gonna tell me? Is that some sort of time loop or something? <laughs> or dimensional loop. I think he might go through dimensions rather than time, but who knows. Um, so, she wasn't here, or the sorrow wasn't uh, using the... Um, Using the helmet, right? I guess I should have guessed the sorrow was a she because of the clothing. I mean, that's probably the reason why he's guessing he the sorrow was a she. Uh, it's because of the clothing, because the clothing does look a little bit feminine, uh, like a little you know robe or something. But I guess you know it, it's in fantasy. It's, it, robes are for everybody. I mean, pants are a fairly recent discovery. Where maybe invention is probably more than a discovery, I guess. Uh, so when they aborted the charge, I heard the big man wearing the helmet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. The sorrow destroyed a city? A big one, around the size of three saguses and a bloom, he says. But, um, the people of the city were abusing the tides in some way. From what you told me about the sorrow, that sort of thing makes her really unhappy. He straightens the helmet again. But I didn't think they deserved to vanish, despite whatever they'd done. So I took the helmet off the warrior, and when he, you know, stopped melting a bit. <laughs> now, uh, I carry it with me to remind me of them. Okay, hold on. So, you know about the tides? Of course I do, he says, then raises a weary finger. Ah, sorry. Forgot. First time, I know. Uh, they pull me from place to place, like normal tides do. It's why I keep seeing different times and places, and never stop in any one place for long. Tides don't rest, and neither do I. He yawns again, even wider. It's a little tiring sometimes, or at least I think I'm tired, which is probably the same thing. Hey, can you actually sense the tides flowing through me? Uh, no. Well, let's fix that, he says, cracking his ghostly knuckles. Before you can react, he thrusts all five fingers through your chest. The feeling isn't unpleasant. In fact, you feel the tides surging through his arm. Through you. And you see them curving back over your shoulders and back through him, binding you together. There, he says. It should be easier for you to sense the tides now. Just remember that she's out there, flowing around with the tides. Uh, with the tides doesn't seem to make her mad. Abusing them? I don't recommend it. Okay, so I gain title affinity. I am now specialized. And there's a ni an extra one, right? Uh, because I... Uh, uh, no, 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 I'm, it's the best one. Because I was uh, unskilled, not unable, or... There's four levels. Level one... So le level two is the normal one. I was level two, so I gained one, get level three, and this one is the second time I gained. So let's level four. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm maxed out in title affinity. This might unlock something good later on. Well, thank you very much. See you next time, he says. Hey, and Tozon, did you see what ha what came out of your pants? Or, I don't know, belly? And Tozon doesn't welcome you with his rolling golden words this time. He merely nods in greeting. Still a touch of that hypnotic calm ro lo rolls over you. You recognize Rin, don't you? Oh. I believe I do, he says, turning to Rin. You came through me, didn't you, my dear? Yes. Her eyebrows jump high in recognition. I mean, you were there when I came through. But what do you mean I came through you? No, you emerge you emerge from another world while I was feeding on the dying love between a man uh, between a married couple, he beams at her. I don't know why you ran off, he says with a frown. I would have been happy to help you find your way home after I'd finished eating. She pills looking with a little horror at his clothes and the maw underneath. I was scared of everything, and she gives a trembling curtsy. I offer apologies for my rudeness. I was not... well. She grabs your arm. She's obviously trying to control her emotions, but she bounces on the balls of her feet and the corners of her mouth curl and uncurl in an irre irre irrepressible grin. That's it, she whispers. My way home. Uh... What do I need to do to send Rin home? Aeon tells on. My maw does not open whenever I will it, he says, patting his chest fondly. It requires sustenance. The bands of love and hate that bind us bring me some bring me someone who feels strongly for you, and well, we will secure a path home for the little one. Uh Do any of my current companions have the connection you're looking for? Aeon Tozon closes his eyes and raises a hand. After a quiet, silent moment he lets it fall again. I thank you, but no. This will require a different, um, flavor. You'll need to find someone else, someone who harbors powerful emotions for you, but hasn't spent a great deal of time around you. Uh, how should I know who anybody like that? Oh, Calistige! 
Oh. Okay. Do come back anytime, he says. Oh, yeah. I am I am bringing Calisteach here. I'm definitely bringing her. Okay. Rin, you have really powerful stuff on you. Excuse me as I take it away. Because I kind of probably will need that. Uh, so that's all over there. That's for her. That's a cloak uh, that's only usable by her. And that's a charm paste that I can get over here. Um, although I'm at my maximum. So I probably shouldn't use that too much. Let's put it over there. Uh, because, you know, maximum stuff. What is that? Quantum detonation. And, of course, this thing over here uh, for reanimation of beautiful things. Uh, okay, bodies. Corpses. Uh, so I really don't want to lose her, but... I, I'm doing the right thing, right? I'm doing the right thing. I shouldn't... I shouldn't... I shouldn't let my, my feelings, my my affection, I guess, or the character's affection for for her, you know, take over her own... She's cle she clearly wants to go back. And I kind of need her, but, well, s screw that. <laughs> I can I can handle. It's fine. I, don't, I wonder if the game has a difficulty setting. Um, I don't think it does, because I don't remember selecting it. No, I don't think so. Nope, nope. Okay, so uh, let me save the game, and uh, let's call Eritus. Dude, you're fine as you are. Let me get all of that stuff from you, because you're going to need... Let me get that. Thank you. And that. And that. Okay. Is that only for you? Yeah. Okay. So that's only for you. I can give you this. Okay, so he's at his maximum. Uh, I'm not going to get another uh, another thing. And besides, he definitely is not going to get another thing, so it's, it doesn't matter. Uh, so he's completely unequipped, and uh, I am going to send him away. Because now I can bring Calistige over here instead of Eretis. This is going to be fun. Um, so where is the thing that I can use for Calistige? Is that the thing? I think it is. Bronze Sphere. Yeah, push Calistige's button again. You thumb the button and again feel, again feel the eyes of Calistige. Countless sisters upon you. Uh, you leave your companion alone for now. You have enough. Uh, you have enough people on you. Yeah. Okay. Funny to, to tell. Uh, Eritis. Eritis. I'll I see you the in a little bit. the inside of my mouth was strange. Huh? But this place. It's like being inside my mouth. Well, it's inside another mouth. This place has promise. He thinks many opportunities for excitement and sacrifice. What's strange about the inside of your mouth? All mouths are strange, he says. Fleshy bits flapping and squishing behind exposed bones? <laughs> it is, it is, isn't it? <laughs> he pauses mid-shudder, mid thinking. Although my mouth doesn't have anyone walking around in it. I'm com in comparison to this place, anything's normal. He beams, thank you. My mouth no longer makes me nervous. Uh, well, it's, uh, it's fine. I think we'd best part away. <laughs> not, a, not because of the mouth. Uh, but yeah, let's try that. Oh well, if you need a hero, come find me. Where to next? He puts his hands on his hips and surveys the area, still looking around. You probably won't be able to find me again, you know? My adventures will take me everywhere. Uh... Yeah, I've got a way to contact you if I need you. Farewell. There's an adventure waiting around me. I can feel it. And he's off. Smelling of gold. Okay, so now I can bring Calistige and then I'll bring her back. So it's a little bit of, um... A little bit of, uh, companion... Companion, uh... Maneuvering and jiggling, but that's fine. Calistige, I need you to join me. You're still with him, aren't you? I told you I f uh, how I felt about that. If he leaves, you may ask me again. Otherwise, okay, well, let's show tap the button showing a sword made of tiny swords. What is that one for? You poke the button and you hear Heritage's voice within your mind. I wonder what would happen if I dueled myself. No, join me. <laughs> <laughs> is that actually you? Heritage shouts in your mind. Yes, a hundred dozen times yes. Nothing can stop me now. Nothing can stop you now. Okay, awesome. So I'm going to need to send... I I, I just didn't want to send uh, Ali Gurn away for obvious reasons. Uh, because, uh, well, for obvious reasons, right? It, it seems pretty, pretty obvious. Uh, ob ob obvious. Okay, let's give you that. That's for might, right? It's for speed. Ah, sure. It's all good. So you can put that on. And all of that over there. What is this? That's for minus might pool, and this is for minus might pool. Both of them. Good. He's still he's he's saying st stuff on the background. Minus uh, plus one might edge. That's movement speed. Yeah, I'm keeping that one uh, for other things. Uh, also, oh, that's gonna be a problem. I got I got too many of these. I got too many of these things. Not you. Not you. You. Yeah, that's gonna be a problem, isn't it? Ah. Uh. Impressively labeled canister. There's a lot of stuff around here that I... Yeah. A lot of stuff that I... 
yeah. Okay, so you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna sell my things that I don't need, because I need, I need to send them away. We're running out of time for the episodes, so I'm gonna do that in between episodes, and then we'll figure this thing out. Oh, there it is. What's up, man? Are we ready to go? No, you wanna talk to me. What's going on? What's on your mind? Uh, how are things between us? I couldn't be happier with you if you were another me, he says, and he blinks. Uh, okay, thank you. Danger awaits! Why? What's on your mind? I have a question about you, I guess. Uh, do you remember talking with me inside my head? Heritage blinks at you several times. Well, that is the strangest question I've been asked by someone else in the last two minutes. Uh, by someone else? Did you notice that? No, I think I'd remember being in your head. It seems like you'd, you'd have a nice one. Uh, yeah, well, I, I do, don't I? Uh, but that's, that's what, it, yeah, I didn't get quest, uh, asked that. This is when I, I was upstairs, uh, I was upstairs. I was in my head when I talked to him. Not, not right now when he called him. Um, you seem to be under the impression that this journey of ours, no, let's not say that. Uh, well, let's talk another time then. Wait What's on your mind? Do I really need to keep talking to him? Are you sure you don't remember? Nope, I don't. I wish I did though. Yeah. You seem to be under the impression that this journey of ours is all about you. You say that like it's not? Erity says, peering at you suspiciously. Are you serious? Always, Erity says, shocked. I'm on a quest to find quests. I thought you knew that. He bites his lips furiously. I'm still looking for the right quest, but I'll know it when I see it. Yeah, it's just the demons in his head. Just, they, they want to be entertained, I guess. It's the one that I will leave. I wonder if that's a sort of a meta commentary on the player. <laughs> I wonder if that is one of that thing. I... I I guess you need to re- I think I need to reread all of his dialogues with that in mind. Maybe that's the case. It's the one, he says, it's the one that will lead me to the destiny that I think I'd see in my dreams if I ever managed to sleep again. Rubbing his eyes with his hands, he says, it's just so, so exhausting. I want the treasure and the glory and the, the heroic stuff, but when I have it, it's never enough. I'm always looking for the next quest. He cradles his head. It's just never enough. Maybe you haven't found the right treasure yet. Maybe, Herdy says, brightening. Okay, well, let's talk another time. Okay, that's gonna be stuck there. Not an issue, it's probably gonna go away as I, uh, when I reload. But, uh, for right now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Torment, Tides of Numenera. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video, but above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.